Hi guys, welcome to the channel of love. Okay, we might not have um, too, too long. So, but I want to get a reading out because there's definitely some kind of energy shift that's, it's involving the divine feminine. I've just knocked my coffee everywhere. I am the most clumsy, clumsiest person, it seems. Um, I thought I cleaned it up. Um, okay, let's just get this reading out. Let's get a collective, um, energy reading going but I believe it's a it's a message for really the divine feminine I don't want to think too much into the message because I've got a lot going around in here and um, I'm trying to work out how to say it and that's not really how it goes it just flows <laughs> okay let's just pull some cards I can see you, Lily. <sighs> like she's hiding under the table. I can see you. Oh, well, you come up quickly. Let's pull some cards and see, um, okay, what's going on. So I feel as if the Divine Masculine is moving towards the Two of Cups, Destiny. But there's something that the Feminine Energy needs to do. Um, I believe it's to do with forgiveness. Um, I think it's about tapping into what unconditional love really is. So it's about secrets, past events. When you understand the truth, this is kind of like about waking up the past. And I feel it's a burden for the Divine Masculine's energy. It's like, has the Divine Feminine's energy truly healed from past events? Because it feels as if the past is a very heavy burden on the Masculine energy. And I want to say that really the masculine energy is looking for that to be um, lightened. Okay. So this is about being uncertain about the actions and responses from the divine feminine. Okay. So I want to say the divine masculine knows the truth. But I feel here as if he's hurt by the truth. I'm not sure why I'm saying that. Hello. It's like this would dampen his passion. So I feel as if the masculine energy here really wants to move on from the past. It's doing the realisation with the tower. I'm thinking of is about facing um, being able to face the divine feminine all Lily's doing is just kind of like staring me out and then out comes the divine feminine so the divine masculine really is wanting comfort um, and I want to say they're not really wanting any harassment we're going to get one more row <clears throat> interesting I've got my Donald Duck cup who has more patience okay with their partner Daisy or Minnie okay. <laughs> is this where we're going okay so I feel here as if the feminine does need to kind of maybe go and have a look at her own um, angelicness whether the divine feminine is worthy of these wings 
because I feel here as if the Divine Masculine's ready. He's ready for the, the stability, the security. Um, the long term. But it's like this Queen of Pentacles, is that going to be enough? It's kind of getting to the root of the issue. What is really the source of the pain? Judgment. It's all about judgment. The Divine Masculine can't really put down his defences. It feels like he's going to be defending himself even more. We're going to clarify. I'm going to use a Druid Craft Tarot. Let's see if I can find them. So I feel here as if the Divine Masculine's energy is scared, okay? It, it feels as if it's scary enough to be able to face the Divine Feminine, let alone what she might be saying, and what more burden she might be putting onto the Divine Masculine's energy, maybe at the wrong time, or in the wrong way. Four of Swords when you're best in thinking, but there's been this energy of the Divine Masculine waiting, waiting for the Divine Feminine to do something. So let's have a look. Oh, Lily, it's quite hard for me. Okay, it's all good. That's all good. <laughs> so the Eight of Cups. We've got the masculine energy here walking. He's walked away from the eight. He's walking towards the two. To the nine. So secure. And we have the five of swords here, which is the surrender card. So I feel the divine masculine has left his old self in the past. on the lap. Gone to the eight, to the nine, finding yourself. The maturity here, the surrender card. It's like the Divine Masculine, there's no fight left. The Eight of Cups go into destiny. The wheel's turned. The wheel's turned. It's like it's now in the Divine Feminine's hands. The Lady. This is a rebirth, like a um, starting again. Like a brand new life, birthing a new life here that's abundant. The lady is the Empress card. The moon, letting go of the dark side, the shadow side, learning to accept and incorporate the shadow side. You can't really let it go. You just have to live with it. So there's the moon here. So I feel here as if the divine masculine will be picking up on the divine feminine's negative vibes as the Divine Feminine earlier on last week, I believe it was, was picking up on the Divine Masculine's negative vibes. Okay. You're all over the place, you are. It's like the energy. 
rebirth. So this is so much about just starting again. Now we spoke about the hair yesterday and it said have you ever seen two hairs having a boxing match fighting they're both quite stubborn okay um, about backing down yeah it's definitely something about um, it's like the divine masculine's lost the will to fight um, so he doesn't want to become coming towards a divine feminine who's maybe looking for conflict rebirth it's a judgment card again looks a bit different then we've got the masculine here carrying the burden it's like he's on his way home but there's carrying a lot of weight here a lot of burden of his own I don't think he wants to accumulate anymore. So the Ten of Wands is about, you know, you need to distribute, okay, some responsibility. You need to ask for support. And you need to let go of other people's burdens. And I feel here as if it's enough that the Divine Masculine's had to carry his own burden without the Divine Feminine focusing and, and kind of bringing that up. Um, Sorry and her head. <laughs> um, yeah, they don't want no more knocks and bruises. It's like just want tender loving care. And I want to say if you can't provide that, <clears throat> then it's not time. Nine of Swords. So the fear, the anxiety and the worry and the Divine Feminine's own problems, it's kind of, I want to say, it's also weighing heavy, but this is on the Divine Feminine's mind. Well, I feel this is on the Divine Masculine's energy. And it's kind of like giving up. We've been touching on that. I spoke about why I've said what I did. I say the Divine Masculine just feels like he's just wants to give up. And then we have the Divine Feminine kind of in that energy and feeling the, the weight of that, the Divine Masculine is. But the Ten of Wands is, it's the last, it's the Tens, it's about completions. It's like the guilt on both sides. So now we have the, the King of Swords, who's quite alert. Okay, so he's very conscious about the type of energy and I want to say maybe, you know, about what he can handle at the moment. Can he handle any more burdens? So I feel that this is really serious for the Divine Masculine because it's like he wants to come in passionately but he's not sure. So let's deal with the King of Swords first. There's something here, um, it is coming through as if um, not wanting to fuck it up. The universe is offering this passionate new beginning, this rebirth. There's this leap of faith here that's needed to be taken. Um, He's just not sure about kind of reaching out and grabbing it or whether, I don't want to say whether it would be worthwhile, but um, if you're not wanting to add any more burdens on, you know, that's kind of having a look and saying, am I just going to be adding, you know, another one to the 10, but then getting to the 11 is kind of meeting halfway. So we've got the Divine Masculine here, looking at this jump. Is the gap too big now? He 
it's like, can things be forgiven and forgotten? So, Unite of Wands. He's normally wanting to come in really passionately, but don't know, he has some apprehension here. The horse is saying, go for it, go for it, but it's a bit risky. Three of Cups. There's this energy of actually, is it better to stay single? Okay? Because there's all masculines on here. So it very much, this one here wants to come out as well, but this feels very much um, the energy that's around is, I think I'm better off single. I've been picking up this on just on people I've been speaking and working with um, off of YouTube. <laughs> um, with the work that I do offline. That has been, I've been hearing that. That's how much the fear is, is that it's just easier to be alone. The sun. I feel the divine masculine just wants to be happy, he just regardless, he just wants a, a fresh new start that's positive. Um, okay. Or the opportunity for it. I felt here as if he had an idea. Well, we've got the tower. Now, the tower is the universe is saying this needs to be addressed. And it can normally represent the aftermath, the tower's happened. You know, the shit has hit the fan somewhere. But afterwards, you have to do a clear-up job. So the tower is here. Because I'm thinking here, how will the Divine Masculine know if his Divine Feminine is ready, if she is in this space, this place, unless he actually reaches out and finds out in the physical? Otherwise, he's just going to be trusting what's going on energetically. Just put that cat flap, I felt it was a bit of a cat and mouse. Now what I felt here was, he's got an idea, so I feel maybe he's not giving up. And then with the colour of the horse, I felt it might be a little bit shady, his idea. So <laughs> It's like however the Divine Masculine needs to kind of maybe confirm or find out, I feel like there could be a test for the Divine Feminine. And she might not even be aware of how this will come in or what the test is or that it was maybe, you know, the Divine Masculine that set up this test. But he's got an idea. Because I feel that the Divine Masculine's energy here does want to address his fear. And it's, I feel, the fear of rejection. But he's facing the Divine Feminine this is about forgiveness. So I feel, will the Divine Masculine's energy face the rejection? And will the Divine Feminine face the forgiveness? So I feel as if there's two little tests going on anyway that the universe is giving the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine. It's interest, interesting with the tower here, how on the masculine side it kind of works that way and now we're going into the feminine side. Okay. Let's clarify the tower. Because we're at the aftermath now. Okay. So let's say this is going to be for the Divine Masculine side, as I've just picked up on that. So he's not sure. Um, unless he's got his defences up until these guys here come back with 
he's found out whatever he needs to find out in whichever way that is but he's on the lookout so it looks like he's guards up until um, he gets the news that he's looking for let's see what the other card is the chariot okay so this is about I want to say the divine feminine's temper because you've got the divine masculine divine feminine um, expressed here within the horses so the balancing and I always look at this as being the hot and cold thermometer and then you've got a feminine who looks very much like a masculine there needs to be a test of balance here we were advised to stay within our divine feminineness this week it was vitally important when I done the working week reading and we're ping-ponging between energies and we've, we've somehow got to try and pull ourselves up on it just to find something that kind of resonates that can make sense of it let's look at the divine feminine here it's like giving yourself a self-examination there's a black cat here now the black being of the the yin the the divine feminine's essence okay the feminine essence it's like maybe they're called the doctor in <laughs> um, It's just time to review and see how much of our ego still remains there. We've been talking about trying to handle the Divine Masculine's energy when the Divine Feminine needs to stand up for herself. But to, to what extreme do we need to do that? I just feel it's a frustration here on the Divine Feminine side. She's holding a, a sunflower and all I can kind of hear her saying is, I just kind of want it to grow. It's, um, so I feel there's a frustration of not wanting to go back and have a look um, and seeing where, you know, the Divine Feminine needs to put herself up on a few things, like kind of, is she kissing herself in a few areas? Because this is very much as if, you know, guarded, protected, and sitting on uh, a seat here with no wings. And then we have the Divine Masculine looking a bit smug, smug here, as if he's kind of like ready. He's got everything lined up. And then there's the Divine Feminines here looking down at this pentacle. And that's about what kind of goes on in the physical. So let's go back to the Queen of Wands. She's looking at a pentacle, so I said about wanting things to grow. This is the planning, the planning princess. Um, okay, lots of ideas, um, looking into the future, and then I feel that there's kind of this frustration of just wanting to be there rather than you know making sure that um, you get there correctly and maybe in the safest way possible to cause the least hurt and conflict. Feel here just having a good look in the mirror. There's always things that we can work on. Always. We must always want to improve who we are to be a better person, surely. And that's never going to change. It's just, you've got to get into the flow of recognising that you always need to give yourself um, maybe a quick check up. 
Okay, two of swords, crossroads now, not really knowing what direction to go in, completely in the dark, armoured up, shields are up, not really letting anyone in. It's quite a nice calm place to be. But, but what? I don't think the Divine Masculine can feel you. You can't feel that love. You got two of cups, <clears throat> excuse me, two of cups. I'm just, I'm reading this card a different way today. So we'll do it together. Two of cups are standing up there. His one's knocked over. And then there's one behind that's standing up. So I, feel, I just feel as if this is a divine masculine just waiting for the divine feminine to pick herself up. Rather than being guarded. And um, there's a resistance there. Let's look at the Nine of Cups. Mr. Smug here, who seems to maybe know it all now. <laughs> the Hangman, he's just not speaking about it. He's waiting. So he's here, he's vulnerable. It's like he's, he's waiting. So now what then? Because if the Divine Masculine is in the air waiting, would you like to know what needs to be done? It's like, can you take that look in the mirror? Queen of Swords. This is very much, can you hold your tongue? Can you really be the Queen of Pentacles? That nurturing, loving, caring, considerate, compassionate, understanding, leaving things in the past, moving on just to a more pleasant future. There's positivity within the Queen of Pentacles or the Queen of Swords, ice cold, sharp with your tongue, um, and I feel here that she's in her, her Mrs. Mrs. Know-It-All energy. Because it's the blue and it's the, the violets and the purple, all associated with the crown chakra, the third eye, and even the throat chakra. Or does the truth really matter? Is it just best to be in comfort and love? what's really important. Of course the truth is, but not to be right. Not to be right. It's a journey. So in comes the judgment, straight over the Divine Feminine's head here. You might as well just have it now. It's just like, bring it on then, come on. Bring on the judgment on the Divine Feminine. The worthiness of these wings. So much about the Divine Feminine setting herself free. If she had her angel wings there, she'd be able to drop her swords. She wouldn't need the blindfold. She'd just be able to soar. Okay. So let's look at the judgment. <clears throat> This is like it's got nothing else to do with anybody else but the Divine Feminine. Finding the balance.
Defense has the swords. Again, it's holding back this sword. Can you hold back? Can you make that agreement with yourself that you're not going to respond? You understand what energy you need to be in. And the thing is, is the Divine Feminine can do that with other people if it isn't her own immediate story. Well, what happens when it's your story that you're dealing with and not another person's? Resurrection. Who is it? A masculine or a feminine underneath here? Who is resurrecting? <laughs> At least the story's changed. <laughs> it's definitely been a shift, isn't there? In the storytelling. There's the story. Okay. Angel prayers. Please help us. It's that masculine temper within the divine feminine that's been there to protect her. It was the energy that stood up for the divine feminine as she was going through her ascension. So she's got quite used to using them. But we've been trying to work on making our masculine within, our energy more divine. Okay. That's forgiving. Because masculine sometimes, and feminines to be honest, we all need to work on our forgiving skills. So a divine masculine and divine feminine would be very forgiving. Focus your mind. Thank you, angels, for helping me to focus on my priorities. And I want to say that's about how we project ourselves when our buttons are pushed or in the heat of the moment. Um, focus your mind. The angels can see that there's so much on your mind right now that at times you find it difficult to focus on what's important. Right now your mind is all over the place and maybe even thinking about the worst possible outcome of a situation. You are being encouraged to think about, about what you do want so that your intentions are set on the highest outcome. The expanded interpretations. The angels can see that there's too much going on in your mind and it's taking you away from your priorities. They want to come in and help you focus so, you, so that you can be at your best at this time. Take a moment to let go of any challenging and negative thoughts because they aren't serving you. It's time to refocus in a loving and positive way and let the angels help. Let's carry on, let's get another one. Speak your truth, Archangel Gabriel. Thank you, Gabriel, for helping me to speak with integrity. There was definitely something here about, when I was saying it, um, it's when it came out of my mouth about how the Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine, you know, should be exceptionally good at their forgiving skills okay capabilities but that i wanted to kind of add in but that doesn't mean that we're here to tolerate certain stuff um it's just that we don't hold it against people or ourselves so let's read this thank you gabriel for helping me to speak with integrity The angels around you at this time are encouraging you to speak your truth. It has reached a point in your life where you must be honest with yourself and all those around you. 
if you're holding anything in or feel you need to share something with those who matter most to you, then do so. As you share your truth, you will create an openness in your heart that will enable you to receive extra support and guidance from the angels in heaven. The expanded interpretation. If you're constantly saying yes when you really want to say no, or someone around you is making you feel that you're losing all sense of yourself, now's the time to speak up. The angels are encouraging you to be honest about what you want. You may be telling yourself you don't want a specific situation in your life, but it's time to be real. What do you want? Whatever your truth, Archangel Gabriel is encouraging you to speak up now. So Archangel Gabriel, Gabriel name, Gabriel's name means God's strength and she is the angel of mothers and of communication, the ultimate nurturing angel who can help us feel safe and supported in emotional situations, especially if they have anything to do with integrity, integrity or truthfulness. Gabriel surrounds all those who call on her in a pink and white nurturing light and she holds us like a mother. Allow her into your life so you can speak honestly with the light of integrity in your heart. She's got pink hair here. <laughs> it was a, it says it would be surrounded by pink and white light. Okay. Um, I feel like I want to get one more. Signs from heaven. Thank you, heaven, for sending me reminders of your presence. I was, wasn't sure if I was going to talk about this. I was thinking about this very deeply when I was in the shower. This message was coming through. About when we lay people to rest and how forgiveness occurs. Um, death. Some people aren't set free until um, maybe the person that was holding them back um, has died or anybody that you have any kind of grief with, you have to surrender when they make that transition. Um, and it's like we need to find that now. Why is it only in death that we can find that peace? And, okay, it's, it's about, I want to say, is it because they're alive? And the opportunity is still there to be had within the physical that you can't really let things go rather than holding on. When you lose somebody very close to you, afterwards you don't tend to say very nasty things about them. Um, I remember my dad always saying that. My dad's still alive. He's like, oh, you don't speak bad of the dead. I've only just thought of that now and that there's some truth there. We don't because we learn to forgive. And how, how I was feeling this morning, and it was something that actually kind of come up on my Facebook memories, personal memories, and my husband, um, it would have been two years ago yesterday that we had his funeral, and today were some flowers um, that come up as a memory. He had a, a very big funeral, my husband, and um, there were some flowers, and I just kind of felt... You don't hold any grudges when someone's passed over. But if he was to come back now and have the opportunity to live, it doesn't mean that I would choose to, you know, spend all my time with him. But I would most definitely say to him, forget all the past. That doesn't matter. And that's what I'm kind of feeling with this rebirth. When someone's died and they kind of come back to life, okay, are you going to keep carrying on all the stuff from that past life? And it's about not needing to die in the physical to be able to have that rebirth so is there a way that it was the six of cups that was coming up with the flowers and you have the church in the background and I felt it was just leave it you know lay it to rest if you get to make any fantastic memories with people that you you know that maybe aren't in your life now but are alive um and that opportunity comes then just look at that as kind of a resurrection as a rebirth, the opportunity is here to make some more fantastic memories with you. Um, and if it doesn't happen, 
then can't you just like lay it to rest as you would with someone who has made a physical transition and just hold on to all the good memories you don't break up all the bad memories once they're gone so like I said I had a lot to say but I wasn't sure how it was going to come out I hope that made sense it's not really I don't want to say you know look at them they might as well be dead but I did have a think about two years since my husband passed away and I haven't really seen anybody it's like everybody died and then I suppose any anger that comes out we want to project that don't we onto people that are still living because we can do that we have we feel that we have this reason this excuse to um to be angry at them because they have an opportunity to rectify that because they are here in the physical rather than someone how do you rectify something with someone if they're not physically in a body to rectify with you let it go so it's not saying you know they may as well all be of died but it can feel like that so allow it to be that and if there's a resurrection and the opportunity to create more fantastic memories with this person or people then allow it to be that resurrection don't rake up the past but that doesn't mean you know that you didn't change but you're going to be able to handle situations but what it is it's it just boils down to how does it sit with you what's hurting you still and how can we lay that to rest and we all need to work on it and i i don't know i just felt that that was a, a, a kind of good way and there are some cards we might pull one i think it's from the the oracle of shadows and lights and there's a card in there i believe it says it's this plant plant a flower because i don't think we should need to let go of all the fantastic memories that we've made with people just because they're not in our life anymore okay let's not wait for forgiveness to occur just when somebody physically dies find the peace now oh right signs from heaven let's read it angels and loved ones in heaven are sending you signs of their presence they want you to know that you never walk this path alone and that in times of great need and emotion they are standing beside you and blessing your heart with love they are encouraging you to keep focused on signs such as seeing the same numbers finding feathers or receiving visits from angels or loved ones in your dreams these are signs of support from heaven the expanded interpretation Angels and loved ones rejoice in reminding you of their presence, but they don't want you to rely on signs to prove they exist. So signs will come to you when you wholeheartedly trust, believe and know in your heart, soul and mind that your loved ones and angels are there. Of course, they will send you signs to try and reconnect your faith and belief, but try not to rely on the signs to prove anything. Instead, take them as gentle reminders that you aren't alone and all is well. I feel here, they say to not rely on the signs, okay? Don't become dependent upon the signs. And that comes in with that, because that's connecting with divine. But that's following just divine guidance that's when you're at a crossroads and you don't know what to do so you need the signs and you need the guidance at a particular time in your life until you're good to kind of grow your own wings put down your swords take the blindfold off and guide yourself and just know that every step of the way you're going to be guided gently it's not going to feel so much about questioning what you're doing it'll be more you know what to do I like that. But let's get a postcard from Spirit. Ace of Base. I saw the sign and it opened up my eye. I saw the sign. No one's gonna drag you up to get into the life where you belong. Or the land, is it? 
the land where you belong. That's an old song, Ice of Ice. Let's have this message. It says, be fearless. Oh, I'm clicking. <laughs> Dearest Joan, are you taking yourself and your problems too seriously? Maybe fear of the future is weighing on you. We would like you to take a little break from all that and start having fun in capitals. When you stop fixating on what has been making you heavy hearted, we get a chance to move some magic in your direction. We just need you to let go a little. Spirit needs some room and gets very inspired by your laughter when you have fun. When was the last time you got really loose, silly and goofy? Maybe you need to go dancing or watch some very funny comedy to make you laugh. Or call the one friend you know will remind you how ridiculous and delightfully giddy you can be. You will return refreshed and renewed and ready to once again see the world as less daunting. And you will be ready to receive in perfect timing the bounty that spirit has for you. Don't you just love how much we care about you? So I feel here the Divine Feminine just losing her sparkle, just the fun aspect of life. Tapping back into that, lightening the load. I'm going to get this wrapped up soon. Um, let's get an enchanted map. If you're still waiting for a personal reading, don't worry, there is a little list going on. I believe there's about 13 of you now. What's that number of death? <laughs> um, I got a few out yesterday. So I am getting through them. They come at perfect timing though. But um, they were a good 40, 50 minutes long. And then by the time I upload it, so... Okay. They will get to you. Let's get a... Um, an oracle from the enchanted map. Oh, movement. I've got it in reverse. Okay. I think my whole deck is upside down, but I'm going to take it in reverse. It's card number 28. It has a reverse meaning. Do you feel as if you're walking in circles, seemingly not getting anywhere? Consider the spiral that travels up and around. Two steps forward, five steps back. Even backward movement helps you progress and reach your goal. You may need to revisit some of the places where you forgot to look for treasure. Another message is this. I'm trying to get my words out, so sorry. Another message is this. Lessons need repeating for those who refuse or are. Unable to learn them the first time. Consider this another invitation to mastery. And that's what take it take it as. It's an invitation to reach a level of mastery, mastering yourself. Because the ego can really kick in, not wanting to actually have a good look at yourself and see whether you know you've kind of slipped in some things or bad habits, or how divine are you really claiming to be. So let's, I'm going to read this again. There's the card. Ooh, that's a good uh, view. Do you feel as if you're walking in circles, seemingly not getting anywhere? Consider the spiral that travels up and around. Two steps forward, five steps back. Even backward movement helps you progress and reach your goal. You may need to revisit some of the places where you forgot to look for treasure. Another message is this. Lessons need repeating for those who refuse 
or are unable to learn them the first time. Consider this another invitation to mastery. Okay. I'm going to get another one from here. And I want to end on a roomy message. Coming apart, now that was at the bottom. When I turned the deck around, this was, um, okay, the bottom of the deck and it's, it's obviously wants to come out, so. 46, coming apart. Now is the time to take separate paths. The coming apart card is a sign to put an end to what is no longer working for you. Has a commitment been broken? Perhaps you need to break a promise or change course because you took on more than you could handle. This is a perfect time to reassess your goals and values. Are your actions in alignment with what you believe in? Have you created, <clears throat> excuse me, have you created a partnership that is not mutually beneficial? Separation, disillusion and dispersion are all in focus now. If someone wishes to break away from you, don't chase the relationship out of a sense of fear. The price you'll pay will not be worth the prize. Separation brings good fortune. Okay. Rumi. Oh, I said I was going to pull an oracle, wasn't I? If, um, yeah, let's pull an oracle of <coughs> shadow and light if I can actually um, speak. Let's give these a shuffle. I'm trying to will the sunshine out. It's very overcast. Oh, okay. Bend a broken heart fairy. Healing from heartache. Thirty-six. About the mend a broken heart fairy. Here she comes to gather up your heart's sore pieces and place a sweet bandage on the place that is most wounded. And this one tender gesture does more to heal you than could a thousand years of therapy. It's time for small kindnesses to be received, for you to know that the little gifts of friendship and sweetness are the ones that will assist you most, of, most at this time. Allow yourself to be treated gently and to be tended to with kindness and to be hugged. Allow yourself to accept that this is a time when you need to take good care of yourself. You are healing and on the mend, but do not undo her medicine by forcing yourself to hurry up and get over it. The mend of broken heart fairy speaks. You have been hurt and this heart feels bruised to me. It may have been what is called a lover's quarrel or unrequited love. It may have been a breakup and it may be that an adventure in love has turned harsh. But I'm here to help you mend, and I will not let your broken heart bleed. I will wash, clear, heal, balance, and place the bandage over the wound, protect, and send you the healing that means deep, restful sleep, and peace return to you. I want you to take it easy on the path of love for now. Soon you will feel your vitality return, but for now, it's a time to rest. It's a time of rest. 
the divination message. When you have heartache, it is important to treat yourself well. Take time away from the flurry of shoulds you are so often confronted with. Why not take some time to snuggle on the couch with a favourite old movie and have a sniffle? Have a long, comforting bath and be sure to make a promise to yourself to let close people who are worthy of your love. It's not about being bitter or guarded, but you are a sensitive and tender sweet being and some people are just not. So, now is not the time for harshness. Soft blankets, sweet dreams, long baths and a reduction of the harsh, harsh energy around you are best. Then the Mender Broken Heart Fairy can fly in to soothe you. You will feel her presence and she will lift the pain until all that is left is sweet, gentle wisdom. So it's really shouting out here. The Divine Feminines have, may have thought that they've kind of really worked through the heart, the heartbreak, the heartache that they've experienced. And now that I want to say that the kind of, the wheels turned and... I feel the Divine Feminine is just having this come back up to be addressed again. Um, okay. It's an invitation to mastery. Okay. Self-examination. The power of love. I don't know why I'm getting one of these. We've kind of gone off again. I was kind of getting off. I need to. Yes, I do need to get off. Okay. Oh, discernment, and it's upside down, but these aren't reversed. But this is what we had this card, and I said that both the divine masculine and the divine feminine were needing to really work on this discernment. You are developing the skill to distinguish love from fear and truth from illusion. One of the hardest lessons to grasp for why living in this physical dimension is the art of discernment. Life is a series of choices and you always want to make the right one for your soul's evolution. Discernment is not judgment. Discernment is living your life with a recognition of what is in alignment with your unique path. When you are centred in your being and aware of your own true power, it doesn't say true power, but hey, when you are centred in your being and aware of your own power, you are able to see the love and truth in everything and everyone. Intuition is the language of your soul. So it is imperative that you understand how your soul speaks to you. And the best ways for you to do so is to listen. When you utilise discernment in your daily life, choices become easier and manifesting the best possible outcome doesn't seem like a matter of chance. The wonderful Shakespeare adage, to thine own, own self be true, encapsulates discernment perfectly. Adage, is that how you say that? Can we just say the wonderful Shakespeare quote? To thine own self be true, encapsulates discernment perfectly. Remember, what seems important to you may not be so, may not be to someone else. So when you use discernment, understand that it is for your own benefit and growth. And what is beneficial to you on your path to self-acceptance ripples outward to those around you. When you know yourself, love yourself and honour who you are, you become aligned with your divine self. When this happens, you attract only good into your life. Discernment, Rumi, <laughs> Coffee, Donald Duck. <coughs> Excuse me, my throat is really um, not wanting to talk. Okay. Alright, let's get a message from here today.
I'm going to have to read both. The first one is card number six and it's one. I have abolished duality from myself. I have seen the two worlds as one. One I seek, one I know, one I see, and one I call. You look for me, and what do you see? You. Am I playing games with you? Holding up a mirror for you to behold God? Yes, these are games of love and truth. Look for me and find yourself, for I am you and you are me, and together we are one. Playing hide and seek in love's great playground. Got like this game of cat and mouse, how it changes and swaps around. Like molten gold poured from the furnace of divine love into a one of a kind mould, you are created uniquely and of divine essence. You are both the lover and the beloved. There is no aspect of your life separate from your spiritual journey and there is no aspect of you that is not of divine origin. So then why the frowning, the fear or the questioning? Let me share a sublime secret with you. Let me whisper it into your heart now. There is nothing to fear. All is unfolding according to the divine genius and there is a sweet shift in store for you. No matter how dire circumstances may appear to be or despairing you may feel, there is still an avenue through which fulfilment and resolution will be granted. This will happen, that is because the divine seeks wholeness of the one. That means anything and every part of existence and that includes you and all aspects of your being and life, is claimed by the divine. Your return to the divine, your turn to the divine, is demanded. Every part of you, every life circumstance. The divine keeps vigorous, flawless accounts. Therefore, nothing shall be left unaccounted for, not even that which seems to be outside divine attention and grace at this moment. You must remember that you are a living heart, the dweller at the centre between heaven and earth, star and soil, light and dark. If you cannot summon the joy to rise up and meet the divine beloved, fear not. <clears throat> that cunning lover lies deep within the depths waiting to gather you into sacred embrace as you descend into darkness. Either through flying or falling, you shall be caught and tangled up in divine embrace, so fear not. Cast aside worry and concern. Know that you are thoroughly itemised on the divine ledger and not one moment of your struggle or suffering shall miss the hawk-like gaze of the ever-attentive and heavenly beloved. This oracle comes to you with a particular guidance. There is a friction or conflict within you or your life right now. A sense perhaps of being pulled in more than one direction and confusion because of this. You are questioning which path to take, this way or that. What if you choose this path and it turns out the other would have been better? But how can you know now what choice, if any, is most, is most needed in your life? So many questions your mind is scurrying. There is no other word for it. Backwards and forwards it goes, to and fro, trying to settle upon the truth. I love you too much to allow this to continue unchecked. Surrender it. Give it up. The truth you seek is this. You shall be. You shall manifest your destiny just as the acorn grows into the oak tree. You cannot be other than what you are and as you accept this, life responds. It breathes and relaxes around you so what you need can come to you more easily. It finds you 
drawn to the need in you that is natural and inviting and not a cause for anxiety or stress. The, the need leads to satiety. I think that's how you say it. What are desired? What are desired? What is desired and what fulfills that desire is one. They are lovers that come to each other naturally, even through darkness and confusion, drawn to each other, following the natural course of the universe to become one. So do not fret and fear, my beloved. Do not hold back from that which feels incomplete out of anxiety or distress. It is just the lover that will soon be joined by the beloved. I said about there was some craftiness going on. I'm just going to put this up because it makes my screen lighter. <laughs> so do not fret and fear, my beloved. Do not hold back from that which feels incomplete out of anxiety or distress. It is just the lover that will soon be joined by the beloved. You are recognising the moment before this occurs. So fret not, and instead, let that inner lover loose. Allow her to shake out her hair, put on her most sensual perfume, and laugh as she dances barefoot in fields of lush grass and fragrant flowers. Let her tempt her beloved to come close because she can be seen. She can be heard. Her movement sends her scent through the air. She entices the yearning beloved to her, and soon enough they meet, and it becomes possible for, yet again, two to become one. And then there will be wild peace and ecstatic contentment within you. If there is any part of you struggling to surrender the conflict between old and new, between what has been and what needs to be, between passion and duty, creativity and rationality, between this role of this role or identity, then know this, even the conflict serves. Don't chase either one and believe it is the answer. Sometimes the sacrifice is not one or the other, but the idea that it can be only one or the other. At another level, a level of divine resolution, there is beyond the apparent polarity and conflict a third way. The rising up to where there is only one perfection taking place constantly. Open your heart, you'll feel the bridge to understanding and trusting in that perfection there, where it has always been and will always be. Don't worry, all is happening exactly as it should. This oracle brings you particular guidance. There is a resolution and a perfect coming together of elements in your life that might have seemed desperate or in conflict. Something you have been trying to integrate is so nearly ready to click into place. Perform the sacred honouring ritual and stay with your process. The coherence, the integration, the balance and coming together you seek is on your horizon approaching you swiftly now. So let's do this sacred honouring ritual. Place your hands at your heart and say aloud, Rumi, who loves me unconditionally, I gaze into my heart and you are there. I gaze into your heart and see my own face. We are one. This oneness is contagious. May it swiftly affect every aspect of my inner world so that my outer existence aligns gently with perfect harmony with the great divine beloved. You and I are one with the perfection of divinity unfolding, now and always, through grace and my own free will. So be it. When you are ready, place your hands in prayer position and bow your head in reverence and recognition to the divine plan unfolding. Say, I surrender into the one truth of divine perfection, which includes my own divine destiny now. Through mercy and grace, so be it. When you are ready, simply close your eyes and bow your head again. Then you have completed your ritual. And then we've got card number 32. She offers the sacred wine, so drink. <clears throat> Not sure how long this one is, but uh, we've got to stick with it. We're on the right path here, so. <laughs> Let me 
you've got extremely dark. I'm just going to uh, go and turn the light on, guys. Okay. Is that better? Hopefully. O wine giver of enlightened hearts, offer me the wine of your kindness, for this is the reason you have brought me here from the desert of oblivion. O beautiful wine giver, pour me the wine that gives me insight, offer me the wine from the sea of love and fill my heart with pearls. Pour it into my heart until I sh shred the veil and go beyond reason. My spirit is consumed by judgment and my life is reduced by thoughts. Pour that precious wine over the frozen cries of skeptics until their words become warm and their nays become yeas. Will you say yes to me? I want to take you with me on a wild adventure. There we shall be tripping, stumbling, falling like fools, laughing our most unconstrained laughter as we drink the sweetest of offerings. Raucous and silly shall we be, though undoubtedly we are from the noblest and most royal lineage, nonetheless standing aside the tavern, warm and illumined by the golden hearth fires, we will hold on to each other, barely able to stand up straight, crying with so much laughter, sweet wine coursing through our blood. Okay, we're gonna have to read this one. Beloved, you are being offered a gift that is beyond your understanding. This gift is from the hand of the Divine Beloved an offering to you that will lift you beyond what you have known into the next opening of your inner eye, of your heart, of your soul, so that it may caress the earth with the light of heaven. This may sound wonderful, indeed it is, yet welcome though this gift may be, there is a trick to receiving it, you see. When the sweet wine is offered, you must drink, but also be willing to become drunk. You must be willing to let go of your control. You must trust in what will happen, trust that you will be cared for, or that you may appear to be the fool. You must be willing to not have all the answers, or indeed any answers at all, my wise soulmate. And trust that this is according to the higher plan, and not some inadequacy, in, how do you say this, when you're ina, inaqua, inadequate, inadequate, inadequacy, inadequacy. And trust that this is according to the higher plan and not some inadequacy or error. So will you accept, accept the gift that is coming to you, the offering that the sacred feminine brings to you now? It is sweet wine she offers. It shall be an enjoyable journey receiving this gift, aware in a way of resistance and restraints towards life through, through the sheer pleasure of aliveness without thought. Oh, what a journey this is to be for you. So much that is truly wonderful and incredible, sacred and extraordinary awaits you. You who are asked to drink from the generous cup the great beloved is bringing towards your lips. So what if your speech becomes incoherent and you have no words to describe what you feel or if the world around you ceases to understand you? Could any of that compare to the great bliss of being fully alive and dancing with the divine ones in dazed splendour at the beauty of life? This is a party you want to attend, trust me even though no one will be much interested in talking because they will be too busy dancing. Everyone will envy you, though if you open your heart to invite them too, 
many will say, oh no, I have to wash my hair and I have to sort through my accounts and count my fingers and toes. It will take me too long and I simply won't be ready to attend. But you go, of course. You enjoy yourself whilst I'm working long and hard at things so very important. And you may hang your head and wonder if you too should stay at home to wash your hair, to tend to your accounts and count your fingers and toes, many times over perhaps, to make sure you get it right. But then you'll hear the distant sounds of clinking glasses of music, of stomping and dancing and laughter, and you'll think a wise thought, so wise indeed, that you'll stop thinking immediately after thinking it. That thought will be, forget this to-do list, I'm going to go and have some fun. This oracle comes with guidance for you. Are you having fun yet? Well, you may need to wash your hair and tend to your accounts. That is fine. You may even need to count your fingers and toes. But over and over again, beloved, surely you can find some time in between the endless to-dos of your to-do list to throw a tantrum and come dancing with me instead. Your honour and commitment, discipline and focus are certainly to be rewarded. And some uninhibited nonsense, hope, with some uninhibited nonsense, hopefully. <coughs> <coughs> I have to reread that part. Your honour and commitment, discipline and focus are, certain, are certainly to be rewarded with some uninhibited nonsense, hopefully. Come, put aside that seriousness for a moment or more and allow the wild child in you to take your body and soul for a spin. Together, let's go and paint the town the colour of love. It's about leaving the past in the past, a fresh new slate and just, um, just grabbing life, isn't it? The laughter, the fun. Allowing yourself to enjoy yourself. Okay, let's leave today's reading there, guys. Much love to you. Um, I'm going to be cracking on with some some readings a bit later on, so I'm going to be getting them out. I aim to have them done by the end of the month, okay? So hopefully by the, the weekend I'll have out um, all your personal readings to you. Okay, guys, much love, take care, and I'll catch up with you soon. Bye for now.